Hello everyone, uh, I'm Zeno and today I'm going to be talking about one of the more popular online proctors, Examity. Uh, Examity has really made a name for themselves with their recent partnership with the GMAT exam and one of the places they're most commonly seen is also at the uh, WGU Western Governors University. Uh, Examity is actually a pretty nice company, you know, they have um, live proctoring with uh, real people and um, they do a good job taking in your surroundings and in some cases such as with WGU they actually have um, a camera set up which is the best in the industry uh, only a few other proctors have as good of a camera setup with as they do also a lot of people tend to feel like uh, examity proctors don't really do very much they're just kind of there uh, but that's not actually true they're, they're actually pretty good at their job and so in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through five um, main things. Uh, the first is going to be an introduction of how you can use the uh, graging product with Examity. Um, the second is going to be like just general info on Examity, how you set up and you know what to expect. I'm going to do a brief uh, TikTok Reddit review where I'm just going to look at some people, some people's comments on Examity and talk about how... Uh, true or not true they are, you know, because I'm always telling people, hey, if you just go by what people say on Reddit, you know, you're gonna have a completely um, unrealistic idea, and I stand behind that statement. Then I'm also going to show you some um, close calls where people were almost caught, so you're gonna be able to see that, um, oh, you know, these proctors really are paying attention. And then the uh, final thing that I'm gonna show you is a uh, super serious, um, mishap with Examity where a student doesn't only get caught but it turns into a massive unbelievably thorough investigation which will make you seriously consider whether or not you want to uh, tempt fate during your foray into the uh, Examity proctoring. And so <clears throat> With that, let's go ahead and get into how you could use the uh, Great Genie or any of my services with Examity. Okay, so what we have here is a typical um, WGU exam with uh, Examity running. And what this person is doing is they have got the uh, Great Genie software installed and you should probably watch the commercial for the Great Genie if you want to understand how it works. But what they're able to achieve is that although the proctor has the webcam um, on them and the proctor also has the webcam on their screen so they can't alt tab and look up answers on the internet or something. What they're able to do is since they have you know this virtual machine which gives them privacy on their computer they can run a, run a remote access program in the background and then an assistant is able to help them answer the questions and then the assistant can just come through and click the answers click next and then once they're finished click submit and uh, to the proctor it will look like no one is helping and it will look like the uh, student is doing the exam but uh, actually the student is just sitting there while somebody else does all the work so that's how you could use the grade genie or a uh, cheating service if you wanted to cheat on your uh, exam the exams with the uh, undetected programs um, <clears throat> but in, in order to really understand how all that works, uh, we're going to go on to part two, where I'm going to show you what an examity setup, you know, what checking into proctoring is and uh, what to expect and all that. So, you know, you, you can know what's coming on exam day. Okay, now we're going to go through a uh, live recording of what it's like to set up for your first examity exam. So uh, you're going to pull up your uh, WGU Examity dashboard. This is, you know, specifically WGU Examity, but it's pretty much Examity for everyone. And uh, first, uh, Examity is going to run a few tests to make sure that everything's ready to go, that it's able to access your camera, it's able to get a signal on your microphone, and that uh, your internet is stable enough to uh, maintain the stream. So we'll hit play. And um, once it's satisfied, you're going to go next, and then you can click Start Your Exam. And after you click start your exam, you're going to enter this ID verification process. You're going to wait here for a minute and then you will be connected to a live proctor. Let's see if I can speed this up a little bit. 
Okay, so now the proctor is ready, so you can click proceed and you'll be connected with your proctor. They use Zoom a lot. Sometimes if you can't connect with Zoom, they'll use an alternative program, I think maybe Microsoft Teams. Um, but Zoom is the main one they always try to use first. Okay, so um, up here above the sensor, uh, the student is on webcam and so it's going to be the typical examity view where it's not just you, it's from the side, so it's viewing you and your screen. Okay, so that was, um, they're just going to go ahead and do the screen share. So now the proctor uh, can see your screen because you're sharing your screen to them and also the proctor has uh, access to your mouse and keyboard so he can go ahead and start checking things and making sure that you are ready to uh, start your exam. So right now what's going on is uh, the proctor and the student are talking and the proctor is asking questions such as um, where have you placed your cell phone? Um, you know, are you ready for the exam? Explaining the rules, don't let anyone come in. Um, you know, don't read aloud to yourself, etc. You know, the, the rules. So he's gonna keep going and then um, I'll just keep narrating as we go. Okay, so right now the proctor is asked to see the uh, ID. So the student is holding up the uh, state identification to the webcam so that the proctor can verify the student's identity. Uh, now the proctor is going to go ahead and look through the student's uh, task manager and the proctor is checking for um, signs of virtualization or for programs which are not allowed. Now the proctor is going to ask the student to pick up their webcam and manually carry their webcam around, do the 360 degree room scan, but also the proctor wants to see um, your desk, um, your monitor, and he especially wants to see the top of your desk and he wants to see what's underneath your desk. Um, if you show the top and the underneath the desk very clearly, you're going to be able to sail through. Um, otherwise, it might take you a little while. Then you just have to agree to these prompts, click submit. And now normally your exam will just begin, but for some exams, especially harder exams, um, there's this extra step where they have to uh, put in a passcode and then um, that will bring up the exam. Um, so there we go. The, I guess the proctor could see the screen, but now the proctor can actually control the screen and he's going to use that. We should have had the, he should have had control the entire time because I know it's him who pulled up the uh, test manager. <laughs> so he's going to mess up the password and then I guess I'll try it again and he'll get it right. I actually am thinking about it. He probably didn't have control when the task manager comes up. They just, they ask you to bring up your task manager and then typically they will ask you to um, slowly scroll down so that they can see all the things. Um, if you scroll too fast, they'll ask you to do it again and they'll say like, you know, oh, slower, do it slower. Um, or if they want to see something else, they'll ask you to go back. Um, but, you know, as long as you cooperate with them, it's not too painful of a process. Um, honestly, uh, in my opinion, I think that Examity is pretty likable because they are able to launch your exam uh, pretty quickly. So typically with Examity, it's, it's really painless. I mean, I played that at two times speed, but even at regular speed, that whole process was done in about five to six minutes. So it's typically very painless. And I think that the people who have problems with um, Examity, no offense, but I think if you have a problem with Examity, you probably are the problem. But there's exceptions to this, um, and I hate to say it because I do like Examity. I would give them a good rating, but if you have a technical difficulty in the middle of your exam, for example, this is a common one, an internet outage or a, a power outage. I think an internet outage is worse. Like let's say that your internet goes down for a few minutes and um, you need to reconnect, or maybe Windows update, something happens, your computer reboots, and you're maybe one, maybe two hours into a four hour exam and you need to reconnect, the examinee proctors are basically useless. I mean, I hate to say it, um, I hope they don't get upset at me for saying that, but it's true. Uh, it seems like there is some kind of break in the chain of communication. Like, I don't know, maybe the proctors have no power or maybe they don't have a supervisor who has power. I don't know, but the point is whenever you try and use Examity support, most likely you're either going to get transferred a lot and have extremely long wait times or they're just not going to be able to help you or they're just gonna kind of ghost you for a while and then you're gonna ask for an update and they're gonna say, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And then you're gonna have to um, reschedule 
your exam, unfortunately. Now, fortunately, rescheduling your exam is not the worst thing in the world. Um, typically, Examity is not going to give you like a 50% on your exam because you were halfway through and something crashed. Um, it's true that you're going to have to start over and that, you know, that takes, that wastes a lot of your time, but typically you can start over. It's, it's okay. Sometimes it will use up one of your attempts. Other times it won't. It just depends on what happened, what the proctor said. Um, you know, it, it varies, but it's not typically the case that because Examity cannot get you back into your exam, that makes you fail. That doesn't happen. If you have an error, they probably won't be able to fix it, but you'll be okay. You know, um, you'll still be able to take the exam again and, and then get your grade. You know, um, don't worry too much about that. Okay, so I'm going to start with Reddit, and I am going to go through uh, my opinion of what people are saying about uh, Examity, and I have a pretty good perspective because I've, I've seen it like hundreds of times. I know what Examity actually does. So this person is saying that uh, Examity has been going through his browser history, and um, I think that is a total lie. I don't think that's true at all. They would never do that. Um, uh, I think that this person down here, he comments that it's probably um, not the browser history, but the task manager. And I think this person is uh, probably correct. So uh, you don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, here's another one from uh, Queens University. And um, he's asking about it and um, he's worried about it. This person down here says that he had the worst experience ever. Uh, 10 minutes in, he got locked out of his exams and the support couldn't help him. And then he had to um, reschedule his exam and uh, again, I'm actually going to say that that probably did happen. Um, that does happen. Unfortunately, their support just is not well equipped to help you. Um, it's that way a lot of the time when uh, schools contract out their proctoring, the proctor's hands are kind of tied. You have to get like approval from the school. So all the proctor is going to really do is uh, reschedule you. And if you get permission from your school, then you're good to go. But typically people always do. And uh, one more, this person is saying that uh, Examity might be the worst ever. Um, he can't understand the proctor's broken English and then um, blah, blah, blah. And they complain about the um, camera angle and all that. Um, it's true that some proctors have really bad English. I don't think that Examity are the worst ones. Um, they do have an Indian accent some of the time. But um, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, if you're having a hard time with the uh, Examity webcam um, setup, it's probably because maybe you don't have a tripod and you're trying to just kind of put your webcam somewhere that it doesn't really work well from. But if you have a tripod and you can just set your webcam up somewhere and you have a long enough cable, uh, you should have no problems at all, honestly. This is, um, I think this is ridiculous. These people are making mountains out of molehills. They're being totally dramatic. Um, these other people talking about, um, you know, you finally get your camera right and then you have to scan the room. It's not a big deal, okay? I showed you a live video of a check-in where it took five to six minutes and the guy was done and I swear it is like that like 95% of the time or more. These people are creating problems. Um, so the way I got these is I just went on Google and I searched Reddit uh, Examity. Uh, I tried searching Reddit for Examity, but it brought up unrelated stuff. So that's how I chose this post. And then here on uh, TikTok, I just did TikTok discover Examity. Um, the first video is this um, nurse talking about her experience. Uh, she took her exam with Examity and she said that she got through just fine, but she felt very traumatized because you can't see the person who's watching you. Um, you're only able to see the proctor when he's actively talking to you. So like during check-in when he's giving you directions like, oh, do your room scan, you can see him. Um, but during the exam, you don't see him um, and he can see you. But if it really bothers you that much, you can just click and uh, minimize the little webcam thumbnail and then just try and forget that you're even on webcam and focus on your exam. So I really feel like she might be overreacting. Uh, this exam, this sorry, this video I don't remember that much. This video, um, he is complaining about the uh, screen sharing feature on um, Examity not working. And then he also goes on to complain that the tech support sucks. Uh, I do agree with him that the tech support is not great. 
but I feel like he's just very bad at computers if he can't share his screen. Um, either he's on the wrong browser, you should be on Chrome, Chrome works best. And then you're gonna get a little window and you have to click your screen and then click share and it'll work. But a lot of people, they just stare at that window and sit there and do nothing. Um, they think it's automatic. And then eventually it times out and it doesn't work and uh, it will say um, that it's not working. This is not only an issue with Examity, it's, it's also a very big problem with um, Proctorio. But it is this one down here. Um, this is a disabled student and she's talked about having a medical emergency during her exam and she said that uh, the proctor would not allow her to uh, go to the bathroom to take care of her emergency and that the proctor wanted her to vomit um, in her seat while taking the exam. <clears throat> Now, we don't know what exam she was taking. She might have been taking the GMAT, so it's hard to say if, if that story is true or not. Probably it is. Um, but if you're taking something like the GRE or GMAT, you, you are able to get special accommodations, like especially for Crohn's disease on the GRE, you can get an accommodation so that you can pause at any time if you need to go to the bathroom for, you know, um, diarrhea or indigestion or something. And also, um, just in general, for all students with um, Examity and WGU and most Examity exams, honestly, um, there is a take a break button and uh, you can use it at any time. So you should be able to go take care of your um, business. You can ask your proctor in advance or your teacher if you're gonna have that on your exam. And the only thing you need to know about the take a break button is that, let's say you have a 100 question exam. Um, if you're on question 30 when you take a break, you need to answer question 30, like mark A, B, C, D, um, before you click take a break, but don't click next because when you return from your break, you're not going to be able to edit any question that you have seen. So questions one through 30, you won't be able to edit them. You won't be able to go back. You can go back and look at them, but you can't change the answer. So if you're looking at number 30 when you take a break, but you don't mark an answer yet, you're not going to be able to mark an answer when you get back. So it's just gonna, it's just gonna leave that question blank and there's nothing you can do about it and the proctor can't help you. But it's not that bad. I mean, at least you have the break as an option and when you come back, you can um, go ahead and work on uh, questions uh, 31 through 100, all the remaining questions. And um, you could technically use this to your advantage if, if you knew that the questions were in a certain order, like, for example, if you were studying pharmacology, you know, you could take a break and then go and do like a quick, a quick review of the drugs that you don't know so well before you start, you know, the second half of your exam, if you're expecting the second half of the exam to be on those. Um, typically with examining the questions orders is not, is not randomized. So, you know, there's a good chance that, um, you know, you could use that to your advantage if you really wanted to. But, um, yeah, don't worry too much. The, the proctors at Examity are not, they're not super mean in my, in my opinion. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our video here. We're on part four and we're going to talk about some of the things that can get you flagged for cheating, uh, even if you're not actively cheating. Um, <clears throat> one of the good things about Examity is that because they have a very unique webcam perspective, you know, the webcam is just not pointing at you like it is now, it's pointing both at you and your laptop. Um, they, they get a better field of view of what you're actually doing. So you don't have as much of an issue where if they like, say you're, you're looking off the webcam, they don't think that like, oh, maybe he's got his, maybe he's got his cell phone in his lap because they have a good view of you. So you don't typically get um, in trouble with Examity for, you know, looking around your room a little bit in the same way that you might with other proctors that don't have that um, kind of uh, third person point of view. Um, but I did look around and I found a few examples of times when people did get in trouble. Um, this first one I'm going to bring up on the screen here is uh, from Reddit. And uh, this student is talking about how he was reading some questions aloud and it um, got flagged by the proctor and then the examinee sent a letter to his school and then his school followed up on it and I think it wasn't the end of the world. But the point is that these proctors, they actually are there and they actually are watching you. And um, the student talks about how he only read one question out loud and they, they flagged him for it. So they, they are taking what they're doing seriously. Um, some other people have talked about how they got in trouble because um, maybe their uh, 
mouse was out of view at some points in time during the exam. You know, they want to keep everything in the view of the webcam. And also, uh, one student, I guess she had on her web, her sorry, her headset during the check-in. She forgot to take it off, and they uh, they wrote her up for that as well. And uh, if you're not convinced by that, uh, wait until you see uh, part five, which I'm sure most of you are here for, um, because this honestly, you know, even blew me away with all my professional experience. So to start, I want to talk about some of the things that uh, Examity is doing really well to um, catch people. And what they're doing is they've gotten very good at catching remote operators during uh, Examity WGU exams. And the reason that they've gotten so good at it is because their webcam setup makes it so that um, remote operation is basically the only um, way of cheating on Examity. So they've really trained their proctors well to can capture um, you know, a remote operator who's marking the answers for you uh, while you're watching. And um, that's really a significant thing, especially now that ChatGTP or ChatGPT has become a thing. Now many amateurs are trying to um, start a business cheating on exams, but they have no idea what they're doing. They're just relying on ChatGPT, they're amateurs, and they will get you caught with um, Examine and uh, WGU. And when you get caught, it will be an unbelievably big problem and uh, after you watch this I promise you there is no way you're gonna take any chances with um, any kind of amateur helping you on your uh, WGU exam so um, for privacy reasons um, I'm gonna be very careful with what I share from this report uh, I'm just gonna kind of go through it um, without it live in the recording and then I'll add a b-roll pictures of it to match what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> what happened is th this student got caught cheating. Um, the remote operator did something and the proctor saw it and the proctor picked up immediately figured out it was a remote operator and um, the proctor stopped the exam and not only did they cancel that exam but they went through and they canceled every other exam and they failed this student out of the course over it. Um, yeah, and uh, so what, what they essentially have is they have this super long report and the report is broken down by the name of the exam, um, whether it was pass, fail, or not finished, and then they've got timestamps and notes and screenshots. And um, I mean, it's freaking wild how much they went through on this thing. Um, you know, they've got timestamps down to the exact second and then they write notes, like their interpretation of what they're seeing. And then they attach screenshots um, that back up what they're saying. So they've got timestamps with what's going on with screenshots and it's just this huge report, you know, studying like probably 50 to 100 hours of footage and they went through every video and made these detailed timestamp notes with screenshots. And, um, you know, the crazy thing about it is like, this isn't even like a super high stakes entrance exam. I mean, like this is the kind of diligence you would expect from like, the law school admissions test or the uh, graduate readiness examiner, you know, the GRE or the GMAT or the LSAT, you know, some kind of like high stakes college entrance exam. You would expect this kind of, um, you know, hardcore, intense um, diligence. But this was just regular online university exams and they still went like this hardcore on like really nailing this case down. And honestly, I mean, beyond a point, once they had looked at like two or three exams you would think they could be like okay this is case closed you know we got them you know like this is this is enough evidence but they don't they just keep going and they they've got this report that's um just incredibly long and they talk about um they talk about like different um pieces of equipment in the room and like they really zoom in on them and like look for you know are the lights on like Oh, okay, you know, the student said that the printer was turned off, but I can see there's a light on on the printer. You know, they, they note like little details like that. And, um, you know, they're watching the, the, they're, they're watching the cursor on the screen 
and you know they're talking about how um, oh the student's hand movement didn't didn't exactly match the movement of the cursor on the screen. Um, I mean, the amount of things that they talk about are just like super intense. They've got tons of pictures of like the uh, task manager where they're documenting what um, processes are running and then they're kind of, you know, explaining like, oh, well, you know, um, here's this process that's running. Um, this process has uh, the capability of doing a uh, screen share. So that could be what's going on. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to really be sparing, you know, because I don't you know, I, I want to respect, you know, this person's privacy. But what we have here is a report that's more than 50 pages long. And uh, then there's an investigation summary at the end um, where they talk about um, just like the most important points, like, okay, what applications were running, um, what key events turned them on initially to their suspicion that the um, student was cheating. Um, and then they talk about like the student's behavior, like what kinds of things did they think about the student's behavior was um, suspicious, you know, like did the student act like, you know, like the, like the student was just confused or did the student act like they were panicking because they knew they were caught, you know, how defensive was the student, how aggressive was the student, you know, um, uh, it's just a really, really thorough report. I mean, it's got everything from the screen recordings to the task manager. Um, and, you know, when you look through this report, you can tell that at minimum, I mean, it might have been divided up through multiple people, but at minimum, I promise you, at least 100 hours of effort went into this report between um, writing the report and reviewing all the different exams because there's a bunch of them um, and uh, yeah you do not want to mess with examity like you want to make sure that you have someone who knows exactly what they're doing because if you make one mistake one mistake on one exam they are going to go back and they are going to review every single exam you've ever taken and they're not going to do like a like a skim they are going to do like a super detailed review of every second of the footage of every exam and they're going to look at everything and um all i can say is that when i saw this report i thoroughly understood how examity was able to get a contract with gmat um i have a lot of respect for proctor u i think their proctors are very good but Based on what I saw in, in this report, I think that Examity has some of the best proctors, you know, in the world. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try and put some good B-roll in there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, this is really wild. So I'm, I'm going to see what I can do. And, um, you know, if you guys are still here, if you're still watching, uh, I want to thank you for watching and just, you know, tell you a, a tiny bit about myself. Um, my name is Zeno. Um, I've been around since 2020 when I created the first proctoring bypasses, you know, virtualization method for all major online proctors except for Respondus. Uh, I never really wanted to mass distribute my virtualization method because I kind of wanted to keep it a secret thing. Um, but helping people with their assignments and things like that has always been my big thing. And, um, you know, if you're interested in some help, you know, I'd really like to work with you. So. Um, I know this. I know this video was super long, and it's super long videos aren't really that popular. But I hope that you learned a lot. And uh, if you'd like, please leave me a comment. You know, I'd love to, to to talk more and answer more questions, or just you know, join my Discord or you know whatever. Ja, na.